Before this podcast starts, I just wanted to thank Mr. Async for taking his time to uh, do this interview and give us a little insight on uh, the developer community for Roblox. Basically, what I've kind of you know realized is obviously like yeah, there's giant games and there's small games. My game personally that I made like two years ago that didn't even mm -hmm. go anywhere made 70k Robux. Not too bad. Yep. Um, that no, was all from like all. paid access. You know that was like. 2,000 or 3,000 sales of paid access, so that's pretty good. And obviously, yeah. Roblox games make a lot of different kinds of money. I mean, if you just check, oh, um, yeah. you know, if you just check the page right now for Jailbreak, you know, if you have the Roblox sales plugin from Already Pro, you can see that they've made 1.9 billion Robux just off of Game Passes, or 6.8, almost 6.9 million USD. <laughs> so, um. I was just wondering, uh, like, if for one, I'd like to just um, see, just use one of your games as an example, uh, and then I just want to check myself. Like, okay, so so yard yep. work simulator. If I go on here, I go to the store and see how much you sold for game passes. It tells me that you've made thirteen million two hundred ninety eight. Uh, sorry, two hundred ninety five thousand six hundred eighteen robux, which is about forty six thousand dollars, a little over that. Yep um so and then obviously there's dev products and oh yeah such but yeah so that's actually pretty accurate i think the game grossed about and i don't have access to the place anymore i'm not on that group but um so this game was it's pretty old it's from 2018 but it's still within the realm of like the current devx standard um and i know it grossed somewhere around 54,000 us dollars and that was um after devx so that's how much well that was before devx so that's how many robux we actually earned as the group and then payouts were made and i think um that was split between three developers but even in to and the, the game has about 7.6 million visits so from there yeah we made about 54,000 us dollars but we didn't get all of that because i was split between three of us and after devx you don't make as much because of taxes yeah of um, course so yeah, and then I, I've I've made games after that. I, I've made two games after that that have made barely ten thousand dollars combined. So it just varies, you know. Like you can you can make one game and make a lot of money, and make another one and not make a lot of money. But I think just judging by your plugin and how accurate that was, you can get a pretty accurate reading of how much developers make. How much more do you think you make from dev products on the average game than game passes? Because obviously with dev products you can buy buy it more than once. So right. Like, have um, you seen yourself that you're making a lot more um, from dev products than Game Passes, or what do you it's, think? So, it's, from what I've seen from the data that I've collected from Network Simulator specifically, it's pretty even. Um, I mean, obviously, people buy more products than they do um, uh, Game Passes because they can only buy Game Passes once. But people, uh, players tend to favor the Game Passes because it's a... Um, it's it's an ongoing reward, so they can. But most of the time, it's an ongoing reward that you can continue using, whereas a dev product is just kind of a one-time thing. B basically, I remember looking at the um, sheets of data that Roblox provides via the developer stats, and seeing you know it was maybe like five uh, dev products to one game pass. So people were buying more dev products, but we didn't make as much revenue because the prices tend to be lower, and Roblox takes a tax on that. So you don't actually make a lot. You make more money with game passes than you do with dev products. It's also just based on the play style of the game, right? The, the game style of Adopt Me is completely different than a game style of a simulator. So specifically Yardwork Simulator, the game passes allowed players to progress through the game quicker. So they're going to tend to buy those more. So it really just depends. Like, it's not easy to, like, you know, explain how much a developer makes because it changes every single day. Um, but it's just based on the type of game, what products are offered, what the cost of those products are. Yeah, definitely. Um, and, and with that, like people are going to watch this video basically, and they're going to, they're going to think like, oh, wow, uh, I can make $1 million, you know, next year by be becoming a Roblox dev. Obviously they're wrong. Um, but, but would yeah. you say like, um, how, how for, for them to start as a Roblox developer, I think we can both agree on something. Uh, so I'll say it first and see what you have to say, but like pretend yeah. that you're not making money because you're not mm -hmm. and make the game that you would want to play personally. Oh Yeah. 
I mean, if you're not interested in the game that you're developing, it's not going to be a good game because you, if, if, if you're, if you're developing a game to what you like, there's obviously number one, going to be people that like the same thing that you like, but you also know what you would want to add, right? You would know what you would want to purchase to make something go faster. If you know what I'm saying? Like you can, you can tailor the game to your liking, which means other players will do it the same way. So that's important. And and you won't get burnout as easier too because as a new developer you have a lot of energy, you want to make money, you want to get into the, you want to get in the middle of it, you want to become popular, but the biggest thing that I don't think a lot of people understand is developer burnout is extremely real. And if you don't like the game that you're working on in a week, two weeks, you will not want to develop. And that's unfortunate because, you know, a lot of people tend to put money over the quality of the games and I think that that's not good. So to try to Make sure that you're developing a game that you like is super important, um, and to also make sure that you're valuing gameplay over profits, because you're still yeah. going to make money. But people want players want to have an experience more than they want to burn through the money that's in their pocket. Yeah, definitely. Um, and then another thing to note too is depending on the game you're making, um, you know, you'll get a different demographic. Uh, Phantom Forces usually, I would say, has um, more of a male audience than female or has an older audience than younger audience. And usually the older you are, the more money you're willing to spend because you have more money. Um, so, so that's another thing to take into account when, you know, you're, you're creating a game. I mean, obviously, once again, don't uh, make a game just for the money you need to have in quality to it. You want to have fun with it. Um, Mm -hmm. but obviously money is a giant perk. Um, of course, but, so, um, yeah, I mean, I think that's about it. So I just wanted to get a little insight from you and um, just see what it is from your perspective. So, yeah, thank you. 